Hi, I'm Kimberly, and here's what I want you to know about the astrology of 2024. First of all, I'd like to comment on the conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus in April. Around the 20th and 21st, we might see some really big, spectacular events. So do get involved if you have the opportunity. I believe there's going to be a culturally significant moment that happens that we're going to be talking about not just for years, but for decades afterwards. So particularly in the area of art, music, movies, fashion, and food. So if you get the opportunity to go to a really exciting restaurant launch, if you can go to a music festival, for example, Coachella is scheduled for that time, or if you're invited to a show or some other exciting uh, event that's happening, for example, a fashion show, an art exhibition, a movie, anything that's happening then, mark it in your calendars as a really exciting time. We've also got the influence of Uranus in the realm of Taurus, which is the natural world and Jupiter piling on there. So we might have some really exciting or disruptive events in the natural world, for example, natural disasters, so earthquakes, volcanoes or any kind of tectonic shifts underway, they could be happening at that time too. Also disruption to the financial and business markets. Of course, Taurus is the realm of all that is normally stable and we've seen lots of disruption in the world of finance and banking with leaps and different types of currencies coming in online, digital currencies. And so April could be this really, really exciting time for advancements, but also major disruption around business, finance, economies, and the world of banking. Note that Taurus also rules over consumerism and consumption and fashion. And so we've seen this major leap in the direction of awareness around how we shop online and generally in brick and mortar stores. So April again is gonna be a really exciting month to perhaps um, see some launches or some brand initiatives that help move us in a more green direction. We're all much more aware now of how fabrics and materials end up in landfill and how important it is to recycle, repurpose and reuse, especially in the luxury goods market or when it comes to fast fashion, there are obviously lots of extremes in the way that we're shopping and buying things, um, but it's very, very uh, possible to resell, reuse and upcycle different items that we have in our closets and give them new life. So that's a really exciting um, area of development that Uranus has brought to our attention since being in Taurus. And with Jupiter, we can only expect to expand on that area. Also food, agriculture and farming have undergone developments too with lots of new ways of eating and dining. So look out for those exciting developments when it comes to what we put into our bodies um, in terms of what we're eating and new advancements in that area as well. Next up we have Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is of course following the path of Neptune, which has been moving through Pisces. And we might consider that Saturn is bringing rules, regulations, guidelines, and imposing restrictions in Neptune's watery domain. So the first thing that springs to mind is, of course, substances and substance abuse. So for example, the opioid crisis and use of fentanyl, the free use of cannabis, alcohol, which has always been um, legal, and lots of other substances like um, psychedelics and ketamine, which are becoming more, I wouldn't say mainstream, but perhaps there's been a bit more um, research and development for those in, um, in a way for the mental health crisis. There also has been a little bit of a pushback already with Saturn in Pisces or a bit more news around younger generations that are less interested in alcohol use and choosing a more so sober, they're choosing sobriety, choosing a more sober path to live. Neptune in Pisces has also seen the introduction of streaming services like Spotify and Netflix and a big 
viral trend around artwork. So streaming being this um, sensation of being able to go and go and go and free flowing around what we consume in terms of um, media, so films, movies and music. But there's also this opening of the floodgates when it comes to AI and artwork. And so Saturn in Pisces could start to impose more regulations, governance and safety measures when it comes to this art work platforms that are just churning and churning and spilling out artwork very, very in a free flowing fashion. So Saturn could really pump the brakes or introduce parameters to work around and borders and boundaries in some kind of fashion around what has been flowing so freely. Neptune in Pisces has also seen the explosion of social media, including filters and blurred boundaries, fogginess around some of the content that we consume on these social platforms. With Saturn in Pisces as well, there may just be firming up of some lines that have been really, really blurry around forgery or fake things, um, things that are false, false information, fake images and so on. Again, it's a continuation of the point I made about AI, but there's a very vast sea of online content and essentially it might just become more important to have legislation around um, what is true and what is false. We've also got Pluto moving into Aquarius and dipping back into Capricorn to the 29th degree, which is a hot spot, being an anorectic degree of the zodiac sign Capricorn. And so I feel that with this touching again of the 29th degree, that we could see some finality, some conclusions and some closing of the book on big stories that have been touching our institutions, our governments, and big corporations, big firms. So first of all, we've got Capricorn, Ghislaine Maxwell and her legal case, her big, big story um, involving Jeffrey Epstein and the royal family and many different high profile authoritarian figures. So we might see the closing of that story, more revelations coming forward, more parts of the puzzle being slotted into place, but then a real conclusion as Pluto departs Capricorn. We've also got Capricorn. Capricorn rising Prince Harry. Obviously he's been um, going through a situation with a big institution which is the royal family, the monarchy. And so we have, since Pluto's been in Capricorn, transformed our outlook on so many different big corporations, big businesses, big institutions and firms. So of course we've seen lots of stories, lots of revelations, lots being um, shared with us from Harry's perspective, from Meghan's perspective about the monarchy, this big institution, this big family and this big monarchy that we are also um, exposed to. So I believe by the end of the year we might have some kind of a conclusion, some kind of a, an ability to move forward and really close the book on that chapter. I really don't feel like it's been um, sort of neatly packaged and set to the side or put away. So I think that there will be more coming forward around that issue, either from Harry himself or from the royal family, making it a statement or moving forward with some kind of closure and um, commonality between perhaps the brothers. Again, Harry's a Capricorn rising. Two more figures that we have that are Capricorn Risings that I've been watching are Kylie Jenner and Ariana Grande, who both, when Pluto was at the 29th degree of Capricorn, came forward about um, tweaks and adjustments and amendments to their appearance that they had over the last few years as Pluto was transiting their respective first house. So Capricorn is a feminine sign and it's also a sign that we attribute to success and having perhaps a polished appearance. And there's a really fitting saying that I think fits nicely with this, which is, honey, you're not ugly, you're just poor. And so there being an association between having the money and the wealth 
and the power to appear successful. Of course, Kylie Jenner was involved in a little bit of a scandal when her earnings were questioned. She was on the front cover of Time magazine, which is a very Capricorn sounding publication. And on the front cover of Time, she was touted as a billionaire, the youngest billionaire having made money from her own company named Kylie Cosmetics. And so with this move of Pluto through Capricorn, you know, the idea of success, the idea of having been, you know, made into some kind of a business mogul or a business success. But then as Capricorn reaches, the, as Pluto reaches the last degree of Capricorn, seeing a bit of a closing of the chapter on that issue of what is success and is it all it's meant to be? Uh, and are, are these people really happy with um, the way that they've transformed their looks and how they appear to be? And the answer, of course, is perhaps a little bit of a no. Now to talk about Pluto in Aquarius, this is going to completely transform the way we socialize. Now, of course, we already socialize considerably in the digital realm online, but with Pluto in Aquarius, all kinds of privacy issues are going to be kicked up. And I believe as well, online bullying or troll trolling, being a troll, and privacy around those areas. So perhaps counteracting online bullying or being able to somehow hold people accountable to the way they treat their friends and their followers. So as an extension of this, influencers and micro-influencers being really, really important, especially in 2024, as Jupiter moves into Gemini, the um, sign of blogging, writing, connection and communication, and Jupiter making that trine to Pluto in Aquarius. We've also got the North Node in Aries, so I feel like there's going to be this real um, impact made by key influencers, key people in the digital realm, and really wealth, control and power being handed to people that have been elected by their friends, by their followers, by their small group, their niche community. So historically, we've had um, kings and people who have been elected as special or the talent, the performer. But now with Pluto moving into Aquarius, I believe it will really level the playing field and that again, wealth, power and control will be handed to people on a much more um, general level and that it will be really important for big brands and businesses to identify the small people, the smaller people in power, the many people in power, the every man. And again, a bit of a leveling of the playing field when it comes to wealth and power, not seeming so exciting, special or revered um, when, it's war when the crown is worn by one person, it really being about handing it over to the masses. I also believe that the next two decades, while Pluto is in Aquarius, are going to be huge for transgender issues and gender in general. Um, of course, Aquarius is the sign that is associated with Uranus and Uranus was a mythological figure that was castrated and left with no genitals. And so that idea of um, a lack of gender or gender fluidity, I think is going to be really deeply, deeply explored over the next two decades. I also think that people who have taken advantage of their fans and followers or somehow misrepresented themselves um, will be held accountable, just like we've seen with Pluto moving through Capricorn, certain figureheads being held accountable or revelations coming around. I think the similar thing will happen with um, people during Pluto and Aquarius, but it will be um, figureheads that have been at the top of the tree with many fans, many followers, and perhaps there being this reckoning where people see those figures for what they are and perhaps not having humanity's best interests at heart. So with Jupiter's move into Gemini in the middle of next year, connection, writing, expressing ourselves is going to be really important. Again, teaching methods, teaching online, teaching and relating to our community, connecting to our broader community, 
Jupiter is going to be making that trine to Pluto and Aquarius. So tapping into the bigger social issues, but having a way to articulate and express ourselves, having a way to relate to our fellow man. Again, those micro influencers um, being the people in the driver's seat who are able to relate and connect. And I also think we're gonna have a little bit of a trend around biking around our local areas. So look out for people wanting to acquire or procure a bicycle. I saw a big trend around that when the North Node was in Gemini, there happened to be a shortage of bicycles. The most important thing is that we all go into the new year with a lot of optimism and positivity. We have some nice aspects um, in January with Jupiter too. So let's make those big plans. Let's enjoy ourselves and make the most of everything. Here's wishing everyone a prosperous 2024 with lots of friendly connection and plenty to be happy about. All the best from me.